Okay. Hello, everyone. Good to see you at the table of the Most High God, El Elyon. And um, today, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties. I'm hoping that um, Mark will be able to join us. He has some issues but I think that we are live. So I'm going to get started because we do have some things to talk about today. And I'm just looking to, it looks like I'm live. So that is good. So I, I welcome you here. And Lord, I welcome you here. I welcome you in this place. Of course, you welcome me in this place too, because we're together. I love you. We love you. You are the reason we are here. You are the reason for our being. This is a great day, great day in you. And um, so many things to look forward to. So today, um, I just look forward to you using my mouth, my heart, and I will speak with my scepter, and we will accomplish, I pray, we will accomplish what we have set out to do today. So again, thank you for coming. I hope that Mike can, um, Mark can make it on. Um, maybe he can keep trying. I'm not sure what's going on, but we will see. Um, just lots of things to talk about today. And um, today is the time of the seventh day. This is really um, something that kind of shocked me, but the Lord said, we are in the seventh day. And so we want to talk about the number seven just for a little while. And then it's going to lead us into something else. But this is the seventh day. And the seventh day has to do with God's day. You know, the seventh day was the day that um, God created all. And then he rested from his creation on the seventh day. Um, but we have a lot of things to look forward to on this day. And so he said, the seventh day is the day of God. The day is God. He said the day is light. And this is a day like no other. Um, we know that a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. And we are here now. Um, this is the day. We've been talking about this for a long time, but this is the day of take back of the earth. And we're, we'll talk about that a little bit more um, as we usually do. But a lot of things happened on the seventh day, but also seven is a number that is listed many times in the Bible. It is a holy number. It's a sacred number. Um, we know that it means completion. We know that it means perfection. Um, and it is spoken of so often, especially in the book of Revelation. So I'm just going to read you just a few scriptures that kind of show you the importance of the seventh day. So we know the seventh day was um, the final day when, when the Lord God Almighty rested from creation. So creation was completed, heaven and earth. God blessed and made the seventh day. He set the seventh day apart as holy. God blessed the day and God's presence filled his creation. Um, Mankind was appointed to rule and reign on that day. All was done, all was finished, and everything that the Lord God created was good. And so it was finished. 
Eden was created, the, the garden of God. And we know that Eden, actually Eden means a place of pleasure and delight. Um, that's what it was meant to be. We know that it didn't end up being that way in the end because Adam and Eve were forced out. And we know that many things happened since then, which we will talk just a little bit about today. Um, we know that if we even read the book of Revelation at the end, we know that Eden is restored. It's new. It's um, just brand new. It's restored. It's better than ever. And that's what we're looking for. So in order for that day to come into existence in its fullness, we must wrap up the very end of the end of Satan. This is um, a day of slaughter for Satan. It's a day of crushing him and his children and his demons and his fallen angels. And as soon as Mark can come on, if he can, then we will probably do some of that together. But if he cannot make it, um, we'll probably end up doing, if we can, um, some short meetings, even during the week, because we have a big job to do ahead of us. The Lord has made that clear. So during this seven years, this 7,000 years, Satan has come in and he's marked this earth with his filth. He's marked it and he has created um, a lie. The, the thing is, most people don't understand what I'm talking about. We've been talking about it for a long time. I hate to repeat it over and over again, but I have to. I have to because that is what is going to end it in the earth. And so he came in and actually what he did is he stole, he stole from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He stole um, truly what evil is and he recreated it into world. And what I mean by that worldly lifestyles, worldly ways, and he made them look good. And to an un, basically an untrained eye, they do look good. You know, there, there are things that we do in life and we say, well, this is good. You know, this is the good life. But the Lord said it isn't. It doesn't look in any way like the creation that was supposed to be here. The, the people even believe that what is of Satan is good. And he said it's not. And that is leaving the earth because in order for the kingdom to be set up, it must go. In order for him to come back in his fullness, it must go. And so let me continue on. And I'll talk about some of the ways in a little while. We know that the seed of the woman will crush the head of Satan. And we know that that happened on the cross. But we also know, and this is foundation, we also know that things were still, you know, we're into the seventh day. And this truly is not a holy place. There is a great deal deal of evil in our midst. I think we can see that if we really look at it. You know, I've talked about before um, slightly about presidential candidates. And I've told you that the Lord doesn't truly desire anyone that's running. And we tend, and I'm not going to get into, I'm not going to harp on this, but we need to really look at what is happening. Do either of the candidates represent a holy believer? I ask you, do they? See, this is what Satan wants us to believe, that one is better than the other. So choose that one. Someone has to rule and reign in this earth, and they need to call what should be God's ways, 
God's truth into existence into this earth. And that is what we're called to do. And that's what we're going to do in these final days of Satan and the earth. So um, there will be a great celebration. I can tell you that when he finally leaves. I mean, it's in the book. We know I'm not too far out of the book, right? It's in the book of Revelation that he will be leaving. And this is the day. So back to the number of seven, because this is the seventh day. So there's seven feasts of the Lord. Um, we just, or I should say the Israelites just celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles, which is also called Sukkot, Sukkot, Sukkot. Um, it's the seventh feast. And I love that, that it's the seventh feast seventh feast and it's in the seventh month and i'm just going to talk a little bit about that feast because it means something for this day um in just a little while so if i continue on and just look at sevens again the lord's prayer and in the lord's prayer that he gave the disciples he said they said teach us how to pray it has seven statements in it there's a lot of sevens. If you if you look, you'll find all kinds of interesting things. So if I just mention them, hallowed be thy name. Holy is your name. Thy kingdom come. Two, thy will be done. That's three. Give us this day our daily bread. That's four. Forgive us our trespasses and for, forgive those who trespass against us. That's five. Lead us not into temptation. That's six. Deliver us from evil. That's seven. There's, there were also seven statements that the Lord Jesus Christ, Yahushua, made on the cross. He said, um, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I just I didn't say that in Aramaic because I knew I might mess it up there. He said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. That's two. He said, three, truly, I tell you the truth. Today you will be in paradise. He said this to the repentant criminal with me. That was three. He said, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Five. He said, woman, behold, that's speaking to his mother, behold your son, speaking to Mary about the apostle John and to John about beholding his mother as his own. Um, six, I am thirsty or I thirst. And this is from Psalm 69, 21. And then finally at the end, it is finished. And I know depending on the translation you look at, you might find that the wording is a little different. I'm just putting it in simple terms. Um, there were seven statements that Jesus Christ made uh, about himself. And, and truly some of this is definitely about the Trinity, but he said, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth and the life. I am the true vine. There you go. In the book of Revelation, there were um, many sevens. There were seven churches, seven trumpets, seven bowls, seven seals, seven thunders, seven stars, seven angels, seven golden lampstands, seven spirits. And then when we look at the seven spirits of God, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might or fortitude, mental fortitude, um, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And it that also, in another translation, it says reverence for God, um, dutiful devotion and zeal. And that I love. Then there are seven graces, grace gifts, and that's in Romans 12, six through eight, insight, helpfulness, instruction, um, encouragement, generosity, guidance, compassion. On another, in another translation, it's basically prophecy, um, serving, teaching, encouraging, giving, leading, mercy. These are gifts that have been given. They're grace gifts to the church. He said, you know, if your gift is teaching, teach. You know, if your gift is mercy, have mercy. And um, that scripture says, we have different gifts according to the grace given to us, each of us. 
If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance to your faith. If your gift is serving, then serve. If your gift is teaching, then teach. If your gift is encouraging, encourage. If your gift is giving, give it, give. Um, he also said, if your gift is leading, do it diligently. If your gift is mercy, show it cheerfully. Um, there are also, and I'm not going to go over these, but there are also seven pillars of God. There are seven mountains. Um, there are seven things that God hates, abominations. And this is in Proverbs 6. He hates haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to run into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, a person who stirs up conflict in the community. These are things that God hates. These things that God hates, if you just looked at them again, they're everything that Satan is and does. They are his ways. All of them. And, you know, he has in this, when we go through it, we can see that there's pride and arrogance. There's idol worshiping. Um, liars, liars are huge. In the book of Revelation, Revelation 22, it says that all liars, all of them will be in, in outer darkness. They will be outside of the kingdom. They will be there forever. This is big. Why is it, why is it huge? Because Satan is the father of liars, of lies. He's a liar and he was a liar from the beginning. And the Lord has said that Satan's ways are going. Satan's ways are leaving. They cannot stay. Liars cannot stay. They will go to the pit. So if you have an opportunity and you are a liar, just hear my words, because if you do not repent, you will not be in the kingdom and you will be in outer darkness forever. This is not a joke. You know, this is not a joke at all. I can tell you, you may make it into the kingdom, but you may have people in your family that will not make it in. It's not because I said so, it's because the word of God says so. And why do we keep watering it down so that it makes us feel better? Oh, that was just a little white lie. This says all lies. And guess what? What does all mean? I looked it up. It means all. It means all. A-L-L. -L. We need to watch our mouths. We need to watch what we say. There's one here, it says false witnesses who pour out lies. That's really gossiping. That's that's saying something false about someone or slandering them in some way, making them look worse than they are, if they are bad at all. You know, we need to be very careful what we say about people. These things God hates. And I can tell you, every single one of them if anyone practices them, they will not be in the kingdom of God. They will go to the pit. Um, we know that with the wall of Jericho, that the Israelites walked around for six days. And on the seventh day, they walked around seven times. This is just some quick information. I could read the scripture, but I won't. We'll just go quickly. Um, and... Uh, that's about Jericho. Okay, so that is sevens. That would speak of sevens. So I'm also going to talk just slightly. I've got a lot of notes here, sorry. Um, but hopefully I am fairly organized. Um, I I mentioned the, um, the Feast of Tabernacles. Um, it was in the month of October this month. It ended um, last week. We ended up doing something else, so I didn't teach on it. But there's one part of the feast that I want to mention because it's very it's applicable. Actually, the entire 
feast, what the ceremonies that they they practice during those feasts speak of the day that we are in. I'm not going to take the time to go through everything that they did, but it's a great study. Maybe some other time I will, maybe next year. Um, but what I wanted to share is there is part of the ceremony is um, it's called the water pouring ceremony. And it is one where it has a special name. Let me see if I can find it here. Uh, I'll probably find it in a minute. I think it's like libration or libation ceremony. Um, I, I missed my notes on that. Sorry about that. It's called L-I-B-R-A-T-I-O-N ceremony. And I'm not going to speak a lot about it other than to speak briefly. Um, so with this ceremony, there were priests and there were people that walked behind the priests and they went through, they said certain Psalms and what they would do is the priests would carry a golden, they called it a golden vessel, but it's also called a pitcher. And I love that it was golden because golden speaks of divine life, divine nature. Um, it speaks of something that's valuable. It speaks of God's glory. It speaks of radiance and divine presence, um, radiance of the heart, a purified nature. So they have this vessel that's golden. And when you, when you talk about vessels, it's basically at, at times a vessel can be a person that is doing something for the Lord. Um, people can be instruments that the Lord uses in his hands. Um, it can speak of the human heart. It can speak of righteousness. It can speak of God's chosen people. And it can also speak of the womb, which is very interesting. So the priests walked to or they had this procession that they all walked down to the pool of Siloam and the, that pool of water was fresh water. So it had a constant feed of clean, crisp, fresh water. So they went in, they, they dipped the golden vessel or the pitcher into the water they had a pitcher of water and they also had a bowl of wine. So I'm missing some of the pieces. I just want to get through this quickly. So they walked with this pitcher and the wine and they um, went around the altar. So they moved, they all walked around the altar and they would get to one area and they would pour the wine and the water into this altar. So with the altar, we can see that water means, it's actually a symbol of Holy Spirit. And it speaks of the water of life. And so they would pour like Holy Spirit. It's a picture of Holy Spirit. It's the outpouring of Holy Spirit. And each day of the feast, they would do these two things. They would pour the water and they would pour the wine. And from there, they would quote, like I said, quote certain things. This is actually speaking from Isaiah 12, 3. It says, um, surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord God is my strength and my song. And he also has become my salvation. With joy, you will draw water from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you will give thanks to the Lord, proclaim his name, make his works known among the peoples declare that the that his name is exalted so it speaks of springs of water and salvation 
Um, so, so we have the water and the water, like I said, represents Holy Spirit. We have the wine. Wine also represents the Holy Spirit, but wine also speaks of um, the movement of the spirit. It speaks of a brand new word. It speaks of brand new. It's new wine. So on the seventh day, they did the same thing that they did day one through six, but on the seventh day, they did it seven times. And that speaks of the seventh day. And what is going to happen on the seventh day? The pouring, the outpouring of Holy Spirit is going to be greater than any other day. Greater. Holy Spirit and power will be poured out on this day. And so that seven times shows this is the completion of the pouring. And there will be people that will be full of the glory and Holy Spirit. And they will be a people that walk this earth that are truly not like any other there ever was or ever will be. And so that is what is coming. So this is great. Also with that um, pouring, we know that John 7, 37 through 38, um, Jesus stood and, you know, when he walked the earth, he stood near the temple and he said, on the last day of the feast, he didn't actually go to the feast. He stood. He was the feast. He was the fulfillment of the feast. And he stood there in the temple area near, it's called, um, it's where the women gathered, but it wasn't necessarily just women. It's kind of where the women stopped gathering and the men went farther into the temple. He he did a, a lot of preaching there, a lot of teaching there, because that's basically where everyone could go, where they were allowed to go, as long as they were clean, um, spiritually clean. But he said on that day, let anyone who is thirsty come to drink. Come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the Spirit has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Isn't that beautiful? And then um, there's a place in Isaiah 1. It says, come everyone who is thirsty, come to the waters and he who has no money, come and buy and eat, come and buy wine and milk without money, without price. And then he said in Revelation 22, 17, the spirit and the bride say, come, let the one who hears say, come, and let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires the water of life without price come. So this, this is, this speaks of the spirit coming in the fullness. And it also speaks of tabernacling, God the Father tabernacling among the people and truly speaks of the kingdom and the new day of living in the kingdom. Um, there, there's something else. I, there's a couple of other things I want to say. I might have to actually get off the broadcast, try to get Mark back on or on. Um, but I'm going to, I'm just going to keep going and then we might come back in a little while if we can. Um, this week I heard the song and I've posted it before. And actually it was a song that, um, has been out there. It's a song that 
I know it's been out there at least 10 years. It's probably been out there longer than that. Um, but the first time I heard it, I knew it was for today. It's just one of those, you know, they may have written it over 10 years ago, but prophecy starts happening and it starts waking us up to what is coming and um, it's people get ready. And I know that there's some other words that I'm not going to repeat, but it basically says, I can hear the rhythm of the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's doing a new thing. We're singing a new song. Many times Mark has said that he heard from the Lord, this is a new day. And this is a day that everything is brand new. And this says he's not a baby anymore. He's not a broken man on the cross. He didn't stay in the grave and he's not staying in heaven forever. He's alive. He's alive. People get ready. And I've talked about this before. It says that there are people with their fingers in their ears and they feel, man, this isn't going to happen. We've mentioned this. But it doesn't matter what they say, because he will shake everything that can be shaken, and he will break everything that can be broken. Um, I heard this song, and this week, and we know that it kind of goes, um, stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stomp, clap. And that is the same rhythm that was given to Mark. So he had a vision of Yahushua, Jesus Christ. And in that vision, the Lord was doing this dance. And he was stomping with his right foot, stomping with his left foot, then clapping. Stomp, stomp, clap. Stomp, stomp, clap. And then we started doing that as well as a prophetic kind of act because we knew it meant something. And then at one point I heard, I heard the rhythm of stomp, stomp, clap in this song. And if you listen to it, you will hear bump, 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 bump. So why is that important? Because I was listening to it this week and the Lord had said, there will be one person who would bring down the entire world. And he said that that person needs to speak. And I know that there are at least two that will be doing this. And even, even more, they will bring down the entire world. Why will they do it? Because isn't this about the Lord? It is. But the Lord has said that he is not coming back until Satan is slaughtered and Satan is leaving. He is not coming back until the time of restoration. So he said, you do it. You bring down the entire world. And I know that he has told Mark that as well. So... He said, somebody has to do it. And it has to be someone that has given their life to me. I mean, life, entire life. I mean, entire being. I'm talking about my body. I'm talking about my spirit, soul, and body. And I know that Mark has done that as well. It has to be someone that has handed, I, I know that I've handed over my spirit to him. I know this sounds strange, but I love him that much. I said, I want to be with you. I've told Mark this many times. I know a lot of times the Lord will speak to us and he'll speak to us as one. Um, he is saying we are one. And so I'm just saying that Mark has also given his life, his entire being, his body. He's not here to, to shake his head, yes, but you know maybe I will call him back on. 
if we can possibly get him here. I don't know what's going on with his system, but I remember the night, and this sounds very strange, but there was a night that I was in deep, deep, deep sorrow and pain. Um, I had experienced some things and I was crying out to the Lord. And I was basically saying, why is this the way it is? Um, and that it hurts. And that I want to be with you. And I, I remember that night, I was full of tears. I was crying with all of my being. And he said that I could rule and reign. And what in my ruling, I could speak almost, you know, I could speak anything and it could, it would come to pass if I did it with my entire heart. This is what he told me. So I remember that night I cried and I, and I spoke my spirit. I spoke myself to him. I spoke my spirit to leave my body and to be with him. He said that I could speak anything that I wanted to speak with my entire heart. And if I did, it would come to pass. And that night, when I did that, I meant it with every part of my being. I spoke my spirit out of my body into heaven, into his arms. And when I was doing this, I was in just great travail. And I felt, I felt a struggle within my body. My body actually moved. It actually moved. I was in my bed and I was laying on my bed and I was speaking and my body moved. I could feel it. I could feel it move and I could feel a struggle inside of me. And then boom, like I was back in, in place and I didn't know what it was and I didn't really care <laughs> at that point. I was just in so much pain, but I knew something had happened. And, you know, Mark has said that when he took a trip to heaven, the Lord brought him that he left his body just like it was nothing. But I can tell you, I wasn't supposed to do what I did. And the Lord said that that I shouldn't have done that. And he said, never do it again. Now, I know that this sounds weird, but he said, never do that again. You're not, you need to stay in your body. But what he said I did is my spirit started to leave my body. And he, his spirit came in. The father of this, the spirit of the father came into me. I'm just, I'm telling you what he told me. I know that this sounds strange. I know that the father is in me. I've given my life to him. He has told me, this is your body and I am in you. You are my daughter and your life is now my life. I am letting you have your mind and I'm letting you have your heart, but your body belongs to me. And I want you to do what I tell you to do and say what I tell you to say. I know that that sounds strange. But when I heard this song, I knew that the lion of the tribe of Judah, yes, is Yahushua. But it's also, it's also those were lions in the tribe of Judah. Those that are in his family. He is from the root of Jesse, the stump, the holy stump. And I know that I'm in that stump as well. I know that I'm the holy stump. I know that Mark is as well. 
Now, you may be as well. I don't know. I can't speak for you. But what I do know is that this is the day that I'm here for a reason. Mark is here for a reason. You are here for a reason. There is a job that the Lord has given all of us to do. And I'm going to do it. He has said, even today, Mark said, when is this going to end, Lord? You know, he said it in a different way. I'm just paraphrasing. And the Lord said, when you finish it, when you do it. And I know that he was speaking of me as well. So I will speak Satan off this earth. You will hear me. You may get tired of it, but I'm not going to stop because I want Jesus Christ here. And he said that every time I speak and Mark and whoever else, I'm not saying you don't speak, but I'm telling you, I know that I need to do this and I will not fail my father. I will not fail my father. I will do my father's will. I will. I don't care how silly I sound to you. I don't care how silly I sound to anyone. I belong to him. I've, I've, I've died, literally, gave my spirit, and I have his spirit inside of me, and I will do his will. If I don't, who will? You say, well, so-and-so, you know, you might mention someone else. I don't know that they will. I don't know that they're qualified. I don't know that he told them to. I don't know that it's their, to, their job to do it, but I do know that it's my job to do it. And when I heard this song, I knew he's coming. He's coming, but he's not going to come until someone speaks it. And until they bring wrath, and, and they've already brought judgment, until they bring wrath and vengeance. And wrath and vengeance comes from the lamb. There's more than one lamb. If, you're, if you've been sacrificed, if you have been a sacrificial lamb of God, we know that Jesus Christ was a sacrificial lamb. He was perfect. He was blemish free. He has been um, redeeming his family back. There are family members that are all over the world and I am calling them back in. They are jewels. I am calling them to come. I am calling the lights to come back because this is the day that the family of God will be back together. And they are the lights and they are the jewels and they're all over this world and we're coming together. And I'm calling you back to your father. I'm calling you back to your mother. I'm calling you back. This is the day you will be called back. In order to get everyone back together as a family, the kings and priests, they also need for the right people to speak not only judgment, but wrath to declare and decree and bring all of Satan's kingdom down through the scepter and through our mouths, the torch of God. And we will do that because I want him back. I want my family back. I want all of his family to come home. I want all of his family to live on this earth together in the kingdom. And I want all of Satan's evil demons, fallen angels, and children to leave. To leave. It's time for you to go, and you will, and I will speak it forth. So when I heard this song, I knew somebody's got to speak, and I am a lion, and I'm from the tribe of Judah, and I will speak it. And so will Mark. We will speak it together. 
And so the lion brings wrath. So I know that if we look at Isaiah 61, it's somewhere here. I won't read the whole scripture, but we know that it, it gets to the point where it speaks of the favor of the Lord. That's where our Lord, Jesus Christ, Yahushua, stopped speaking. He said that he was bringing in the acceptable year, the favor of the Lord. He stopped. And we know that the second part of that verse has to do with vengeance. He is not the one that brings vengeance, although he has been the one who has taught us all about good and evil and the fact that the enemy has tricked the entire world. He has led the entire world astray and made, made them think that, yes, evil is good and, and good is evil, but he's done it in such a subtle way that we don't even recognize it and we call it okay. You know, I was talking about political candidates, which I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but if you've heard them speak, they badmouth each other. They speak terrible things to each other. When I read about the abominations, the things that the Lord hates, I think I could probably find a few just in some of the words that they say to each other. Some of the things that they say are just cruel. They're mean. They're nasty. And it comes from Satan. It's not from the kingdom of God. So don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. There's a lot of prophetic words out there. I know. There's a lot of them. And I can tell you, I don't know what's going to happen with this election. It doesn't matter. I, I truly believe that it's not going to end on the 5th. I truly believe that we're going to have a lot of chaos. You know, whoever gets elected, there's going to be chaos. And... And I can just tell you, whoever gets, whoever is elected, whoever that is, I could tell you more, but I won't because I don't want to make this about the candidates. I don't want to talk about it. But in the end, they have already been judged and their lives are going to change as well. They're not going to be able to do exactly what they have planned because the rule and the reign of the kingdom will be established in fullness and this is takeover and take back of everything they will know with the outpouring of the spirit that there are a people that walk in power that they could have never imagined in their wildest dreams. We're talking about people that walk and they just speak and the enemy, whoever is doing evil in their sight will tremble, tremble and obey. The Lord has said that we have taken back dominion. We've already taken back dominion. So that means he's in rule, but evil has to be spoken off. And he's also said that as we speak evil off, day, light will increase. You will see that days in the future, even though we're coming into a time of normally, you know, in the United States, the fall season where the days are shorter, Soon, the days will start getting longer. The night will start diminishing and the day will start increasing. I am saying this because he said so. And he does have us declare and decree. And Mark even 
has decreed that recently, something very similar to that. And the Lord verified, you keep speaking. You speak the filth and the dirt, Satan, off of this planet. And you will see that the light will increase. And what will happen, and I'm just speaking it right here, because we're going to start being very, very diligent about this. It's a time of being very intense, very focused, and doing the will of God. He has said, I want this done, and I want you to do it. Because if you don't, it's not going to get done. And I can tell you, it will. It will get done. So you're going to find that, you know, I don't know when this is going to happen, but it's going to be, he says, it's going to be very gradual. And then eventually people will start noticing it. They will start feeling chaos. They will start feeling fear because they don't know what's going on. And they're not really sure why this is happening. But I'm telling you in advance why it's going to happen. Can I give you a date? No, I can't. But I can tell you, I will speak and I will speak, and Mark will speak, and we'll continue speaking until it's exactly what I just prophesied over to you. So I know that the lion, the lion in this song, you know, comes in rules and comes in vengeance, but we know that it's actually the lamb the lamb, the one that you least expect, someone that um, is normally very loving, very quiet in many ways, is full of vengeance and wrath. Why? Because of what evil has done. Because of what evil did to Jesus Christ on the cross, how he was treated so much worse than he had to be because the demons enjoyed what they were doing and they're going to pay every penny. They're going to pay every penny throughout eternity. And so will the children of Satan. They will pay back every penny because they could have received salvation because Jesus Christ laid down his life for all who would believe. But it doesn't end there. We talked about this last week. If you really believe, you will show the fruit of believing. You will show the fruit by following the lamb wherever he goes. He is the light and you will be the light. Your light will shine. When you follow him, he changes you. By his spirit, you are changed from glory to glory. You, your nature, your new nature starts to show in your being. You become a different person. And you can't go back to who you were. You cannot. There's no way back. And you wouldn't want to go back. For anything. I'm taking a new leap of faith talking to you about this. I can't go back because once the word is out, you can't unsay it. You can't undo it. I am being recorded. And so good. I can't take it back because it's too late. So I was talking about Isaiah 61 and I was talking about the first part of Isaiah was his work on the cross. And that was his three and a half years of ministry. The second part of Isaiah 61, when it speaks about the day of vengeance, and I have a lot of information about the day of vengeance, I'm probably not going to go through it. This is probably going to be a shorter broadcast. Um, unless Mark can actually get back on. We'll have to work on that later. But the day of vengeance 
is all that I've already spoken. It has to come. There has to be the people who will speak it in order for the kingdom to come in to the earth in its fullness. And we will do that. We will not be silent. No one will keep us silent. No one will shut us up. I don't care what is said. No one will stop this. I will do the will of my father and no one will stop me. I will do what he wants and I will say what he wants. His will be done. We will not be kept silent. Exposure is coming. Exposure, take down, uproot, evil. That's what's happening. Every mountain, high mountain will be brought low. And that's what, you know, the three and a half years is prophetic. The Lord has spoken about three and a half years, even with, with Mark and I. And three and a half years has come and gone. And he has said, it's time for you to do it because we will wait until you do it. He has to have a people that speak. And the thing is, he has already come. Um, when, I, when I look at um, chapter one, I was looking through some scriptures in the book of Revelation, which I'm not going to spend a lot of time on today, but I started... I started looking at different translations and I, 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 I thought, you know, these translations, they actually say one word can change everything. And, you know, I'll look at the Berean, I'll look at a number um, of translations. And just, if you take one word out, it says something different, but I then took out the Aramaic, the original Aramaic um, New Testament in plain English. And what is really interesting is this whole New Testament is easy to find on the internet. So I took it and it says in Revelation 1.8, it says, I am the it does say the ink uh, excuse me the the hebrew words alap and tav i'm not good at pronouncing those things lord please forgive me but we know that the lord has said hopefully for me he said i am the alpha he has basically said i am alpha he doesn't put the the in there he says i am alpha the omega and he said that Alpha, the Omega, is a spirit. So Alpha is a spirit. Omega is a spirit. And I'm just going to write something down that I, I want to tell you. I can't find my notes and it's okay. So he said that we know that God the Father is the Father of Spirits. We've talked about that before. And I know that he has, if I, if I can kind of explain something, um, when Jesus Christ came, he had a spirit of, well, he had his Father's spirit. So that was Jehovah's spirit. We know that the father was inside Jesus Christ. He had his own spirit, but the father was inside Jesus Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. So it wasn't just Jesus Christ alone. I mentioned this before. And we also know that the Holy Spirit came down in the form of a dove, not an actual dove, but in the form of a dove. Maybe someone saw 
something that looked like a dove, come down and rest on him. And that was, that was Holy Spirit. In Holy Spirit, we know from um, the Old Testament, Ruach, Hakadesh, is in the feminine. And so I've told you before that the Spirit, Holy Spirit, is feminine in gender. He has shown me that the mother and the father, you know, a man and a woman. So the mother and the father are the ones that have children. So you have, and, and we know that um, from visions, even that Mark has seen, he has seen father, mother, son. He has seen, um, and I know for a fact that it's father, son, and daughter as well. He has shown us Trinity. He has shown us what Trinity looks like. And he has said that the spirit of the father was on Jesus Christ. The spirit of the savior was also on Jesus Christ. He came as the savior. I know that there are, uh, let me go back to Jesus. There is the spirit of truth that was on him. So the spirit of truth is a spirit. The spirit of love is in him. He, he is love. The Trinity is love. Um, I know that I've been given the spirit of justice. And I know that he has called me a judge. I know the same for Mark. He's a judge. I know that there are judges. I'm not saying I'm the only one. I'm saying that I know that I'm one. And I know that I have an important role in that. So I have been able to speak judgment. Because if I didn't, then I couldn't live with myself. Because I know that that's what I'm supposed to do. I don't care really what anybody thinks anymore. I have nothing to lose. I love not my life. So I love the one who is in me. I love my father. I love Jesus Christ. And I, I will do anything and everything that they say. I have nothing to lose. I've lost everything, <laughs> but I've gained him. And that's what we should all want, right? Because if we say he is our life, he really needs to be our life. If we love not our old lives and that, you know, we're willing to die, that's one way that we overcome, right? We overcome by the blood of the lamb, by the word of our testimony, and that we love not our lives. Because if you loved your life, you could not speak. If I loved my life, I could not speak what I'm speaking today. I don't love my life anymore. I love him. He is my life. And hopefully other people that are watching can hear me and feel the same way. And I hope that I'm calling in the jewels and I hope that you're one of them. I hope that you are one part of his treasure. He said in that day, I will make up my jewels, my prized possessions. And he's calling them back to himself. And that's beautiful to me. The vision that Mark had at one time was um, there was a vision of, I think it was Yahushua, Jesus Christ, it was Holy Spirit. It was um, many lights coming to them. And those were like the children. So he is the light. They are the light of the world. And these are the ones that are also kings and priests. These are the ones that are his holy nation. These are the ones that are spoken about in the book of Revelation. You know, it speaks of the 144. Those are his children. They are, they are all over the world. He wants to bring them back. So this scripture says, I am Alpha, the Omega, says the Lord Yehovah. This is the Aramaic translation. I know I'm going in several directions. He said he's Yehovah God. He who is 
has been and is coming, the Almighty. There's another scripture that talks about he is the one who is coming and he will come. And I'll probably find that somewhere. But one of the things that the Lord has helped me to understand is that we were, I know that this is going to be maybe out of some people's minds, but we were alive as spirits. I've told you before that um, spirits never die. They never do. There will be some spirits, demonic spirits, dark spirits, evil spirits that will leave. We know that they will go to the pit. That is the place of darkness and that's the place that they dwell and they will bring their children as well. And these are the ones we're speaking off the earth. But what I was saying is I know that I know that I was alive before the foundation of the world. I have, I have seen it to a certain degree. I have felt it. I have felt in prayer, I can go into this place. I'm just letting you know of solitude where I feel God. I know God. I know that I'm in this place, this vast place of no boundaries, no limits. And I know that I was there in the beginning. Um, we can go back through, we can even look at the book of Job is where it talks about the sons of God who sang together. We, we've we talked about the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 8, where wisdom was with God in the beginning. Wisdom was part of the creation. We know that Wisdom is also a spirit that Jesus Christ has. But in this day of seven, the seven spirits are also spirits that, that I mentioned earlier that will be poured out to, pe to people, key people. Um, Jesus Christ, Yahushua, had the seven spirits of God rest on him. And there will be others. There will be the bride. There will be the sons of God who will also walk in, in the fullness of the spirit, their family. It's like, and I'm going to say we're family. I'm not going to say there because a lot of times I do that. I know that I'm in the family of God. I know who I am. And I want, I want all of the family to come back together. There have been, I can say that Mark has had visions where he knew that he was going home. The Lord has said, you know, there are people that are waiting for the end to come. There are ancestors that are waiting to be in the kingdom. We know that spirits never die and that there will be people that lived a long time ago, that were sons of God, and that will live in the kingdom with us. We can go through even the hall of faith, the faith, the hall of faith in Revelation, um, not Revelation, but Hebrew 11. And we know that those that walked by faith are probably sons and daughters of the Most High God. Noah. You know, I could go through and list some people. David, you know, I could go through and list. But what I do want to say, and this is something that the Lord has said, say, and I will. So I know that I lived before the foundation of the world. Mark knows it as well. This is not a crazy thing. When you get into the spirit and you know that, you are, you know what it's like to be a spirit. You know what it feels like. You know what God feels like in the spirit. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. 
It's who we really are. We're spirit beings. And all of his children have been were planted into the earth with a free will. And that's the beauty of it. The Lord God, Yehovah, he loves with all of his heart, with all of who he is. He is love. And he loves unconditionally. He allowed all to have a free will. Because love wants the others to choose. If you say, um, I am love, and you don't want to love others, then you're really not love. You, you give yourself to others. You care about others who are love. One thing that the Lord showed me is his love is unconditional. I've spoken about this before. I'm going somewhere with it. But if someone chooses not to love him, if they choose the world, if they choose Satan, and they choose the ways of Satan, the ways of flesh, the ways of carnal flesh, then that's their choice. And it breaks his heart. You know, he could have anointed somebody. He has a son or daughter that he has anointed. And they say, and I'm just, I'm just speaking because I had this conversation with them yesterday. You know, he has, okay, I hope that this is Mark. I'm going to check because, okay, so um, it won't let me in. So just one second. Are you trying now? Because last time we had some demons that came on. Um, if this is not him, I'm just texting him. I'm not letting this person in. Okay. So that sounds like he's here. Okay, so he's going to be coming in. Okay, so you're going to have to take your, you're going to have to turn your camera on, your video. Are you there, Mark? Yes. <laughs> You're here. <laughs> yep. This has been <laughs> You know how long it took me to try to figure this all out? Something weird <laughs> happened? Yeah. Cuz usually it um usually I get the link and I just click on it and it takes me all the way through and I'm there. Yeah. Well, but, um uh, video call whoop whoops my dog okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay so i dropped some just a minute so i don't know if you were listening but i've said a lot i, I was listening on um <laughs> i was listening on facebook okay all right so i don't want to lose my train of thought so what i was saying is that I know what it feels like to be before the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. I have spoken it to, to God. I said, I, I know I was there and he has confirmed you were there. And he, and he has confirmed that who I am, I know my identity. And are you live? Are you saying we're not live? Oh no! Are we still on a broad? Are you on a broadcast now? I am. Oh, oh I I heard <laughs> all of that. I've been okay. listening, to Ma. I was there <laughs> when you were talking about calling the children back home. I was reminded of that vision. Two of them. 
uh, the one was where the there was a warm there was a house, and um, there weren't many of us, but we were leaving the door going out, and the the we were going to people and telling them it's time to come home. And I went up to this person and I said it's time to come home, and then the kings and priests. I had I wrote it in the comments on Facebook, but there was I saw kings with banners, they were on horses. I wrote it down. This was a while ago. And I saw priests carrying crosses and they were walking up a hill. It was a, a series of, it was a long vision. They were all walking up a hill and they were talking, like just talking normally, but they were going up because I could see as they were coming up the hill, I was like on the other side waiting for them to come and I can see their their bodies as they were coming up but then there was a span of darkness between them and what's coming next okay and what was coming what was coming next was not good okay so that's where we are right huh that's where we are now right yeah oh and today on our on on our walk my with dad (laughs) um remember that vision I'm so glad. Thank you, Dad. That I was able to get on. Um, but you were you were doing awesome. Um, the man-made life show is now, mm-hmm. and many are turning to look at the man-made light show. Yeah. And I remember that vision because Holy Spirit spoke to me, and I prayed. I was like, "Please!" I was just praying in this vision. Please, don't look. Don't turn back and look. Mm. But this is this was in a field. This was a field which meant the world. And it was like many of them were looking, but then the light show went on. It was from the ground up into the heavens, up and up into the heavens. And it was like the big, huge, um, like the you know the beginning of the movies, the old MGM Grand. They had them big lights there. That's Mm -hmm. what it was on this, like on the ground, and they were lighting up above the stage. Mm -hmm. When that happened, many people turned and looked at the light show, and the light show drew them in. Let me ask you this. Was it a clear light? Was it a color? No, multicolored, multicolored lights. You know what it reminds me of? And so we know that... um, what happens in the spirit also happens in the natural mm-hmm. and the auroras, the, the Northern lights mm-hmm. been um, because of what's happening with the sun. Uh, I'm going to cry on the next one. Go ahead. <laughs> on the next one. I, I don't know where I'm going now. <laughs> okay, where's the next one? Okay. But anyhow, um, they've been, everywhere i mean i know that they've been in new england i mean this is this is very very odd and i know that there are sun spots yeah i know that oh you know, that's bright whoa i guess so there are sun flares you know in all of those things mm-hmm. but the bottom line is this what you saw is actually happening and it's people people you know online they're saying did you go out last night? I mean, even here in Vermont, people said, you know, did you did you go out and see the Northern Lights last night? Here are some pictures. So they've been everywhere. I know all across the, the country. And normally, and I'm not a professional about this, I'm not a scientist, but I know that if you went to Alaska, it would be a common event to see the Northern Lights, but to see them all over the United States, the lower 48 is very, very odd and very, very rare. So I was perusing YouTube the other day and I saw this one thing and it struck me. It was about the star. When when dad was born, there was a special star that lit up the sky and it pointed to him it led the wise men to him 
and that star has made an appearance again. So it's like, <laughs> I'm not, when I read that, I knew. Yeah, I, knew. I mean, he said there will be no signs, but like he he said that you will give no signs. You you're not going to do anything that is going to be. I'll say hyper spiritual that people will say, oh, you know, this, because when he walked the earth, um, obviously he did a lot of miracles. We don't, we're not, we're not really, and we've seen some things on this broadcast. There's something in particular that I remember. Um, I won't speak about the person or whatever, but we haven't had many that we could pray for. And we, we actually have um, been very careful not to invite people because we know that the enemy is and probably will come back and, and try something else another time based on what I know that the Lord has said. But um, he didn't stop us. But I'm just saying there are, if we look even in you know Matthew 24, he was saying, you know, you can read the signs because there are signs everywhere. Mm -hmm. He said, the only sign that I'm going to give you is the sign of Jonah. And he has said that a couple of times. So um, I can, I could probably say what that is, but, you know, I haven't confirmed it with the Lord. I haven't, I'm just saying, I'm just saying it because that's what he has said. Um so I'm not going to speak about it today, but he did say a couple of things. He said that, that um, the wrath would be spoken and he said, it will be spoken in the flesh, meaning in the body. He's mm -hmm. saying the enemy would love to see the glorification the enemy would love to see the redemption that doesn't come until after. So he said, what you speak, you will speak in carnal flesh because that's what you're in. I have redeemed you and you are blameless in my sight. Um, I've paved the way for you. He says, I will blot out your sins for my own sake, for my own sake. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, with all of that said, we live for him. But every day, he, he is so glorious. He just blows your mind. And <laughs> you know that you have to think. you got to come up higher in your thinking. And even yeah. that is a re repentance. Um, so he said, you're going to do this in the flesh. And then when he said that, it reminded me of a couple of things. So this is the day that we speak the wrath, the vengeance. And, um, what did David do? So I, I told you, I started thinking about David. David was in the flesh. David was in his skin. He was in a body and he he wasn't you know he wasn't in a restored um perfected body and he just stood there in faith and he was the only one that would speak i mean the brothers were terrified the uh, the armies were terrified and he's like i don't you know i don't get it and he stood up before goliath and he basically I have it in my notes, but I won't go there. But he, he said, you know, who are you to come, against, <laughs> to come against the Lord of hosts, the almighty God of hosts? And he, and he used the name of God, Jehovah. He used the name and the name is his nature. The name is the nature of, of God, our father then it's the new nature. It's the sinless nature. It's the, it's the new creation nature. It is the, when you're born again, that's the nature that is, that you have, 
You keep following the lamb and that nature will increase in you. If you don't follow the lamb and you choose to live like the world, you will be very carnal. Mm -hmm. We're in carnal flesh because we're in this world. And he said, carnal flesh will speak wrath and vengeance. And so do it. You know, he's not quite he's not like that but i'm just saying was it in my name uh, onoma i looked it up i heard about it a while ago but it's in his character in his nature nature yeah so it is it's in so if especially if you're someone that has been born again you are a new creation you have his his nature. You followed the lamb wherever he goes. You are his son. So therefore you can speak in his name. You know, we have said in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, there <laughs> been, the Lord has really, I mean, I'll say it from time to time just to make people happy, but he said, you're in my nature and the spirit of Jesus Christ is in you. So speak it. He's never said, don't forget to say my name. Don't be right. <laughs> you're in his nature. You're in his character. You're in the nature of God. That's who you are. You're not, you have nothing to do with Satan. You have nothing to do with Satan's kingdom. You belong to God. You are his. You are holy. You are righteous. You have the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords within you. And he's saying, speak on my behalf. He is in your body and he wants you to speak for him. And so we will. So with that said, I'm going back. So, I mean, if we look at Elijah, like, what did he say? He stood up before all of those false prophets and he's like, who is your God? He was mocking them. I love that. Mocking them. So, see, these are the things that that was righteous. What I love about Elijah let and this. Yep. let me just say this: the problem is when you say and you mock, people are so arrogant that they don't think it's them, and that's where we are today. And the Lord says they don't see that it's them that you're talking about. So somehow you have to keep speaking until all of a sudden they say, oh, it is me. And I, I, you can say what you were going to say. I was going to bring you someplace else. He made sure there was no false fire on their altars. Because it was drenched with water. You were talking about what wine earlier, but. Water and wine. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, let me, let me read this revelation six, 16, 15 and 16. Um, this is the Berean. This is at the sixth trumpet. It says, then the Kings of the earth, the nobles, the commanders, the rich, the mighty, and every slave and free man hid in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains. And they said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of the one seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. And it says in this one translation, for the great day of their wrath who is there their wrath is the trinity has come and who will be able to withstand it so if i looked at look at the amplified it says for the great day of the wrath and vengeance and retribution has come and who is able to to face God and stand before the wrath of the Lamb. This is not Jesus Christ. 
if you if you he's coming as a king he's coming as a glorified king he is not coming as a, a lamb full of wrath but i can tell you that we are i'm telling you that right now because he said you speak it when you speak it it will happen mm -hmm. you prepare the way you say it you do it and i will come gladly that's what i'm waiting for you're waiting for you say when how long how long oh god tell me i feel like i've been waiting here under the altar for a long long time how long and he says i'm waiting for you i'm giving you a job to do i've op i've spent all this time opening your eyes <laughs> i've spent all this time letting you know who you are i've spent yeah. all this time teaching you so that you will be prepared for this day so in the original Aramaic, it says, um, and they said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from before the face of the lamb. Because the great day of his anger, the Lord has shown me that when he speaks, um, when it says his, it can be a female because he is in the female. Okay, so the great day of his anger has come and he and who is able to stand. So what the Lord said is when the wrath comes. So, you know, we see this in our eyes as one event. We see this the way you, if you read through the book of Revelation, you look at the different translations. I'm really starting to get annoyed with it because it really does look like it's one event and we know that there is a series of events. There's a series of speaking. And then there's that final one that brings what we're waiting for. To pass. Yeah. It's funny because today I was reminded of what he said about uh, today. There are many days in today. So we are in the day, but there are many days that are coming in the day. That's right. Today. But he's also said, this hour, <clears throat> excuse me, this is the hour. So I know that some of it hinges on the willingness to speak. Because when you speak, it happens. He's already said that. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there's a delay. He said, people feel people of the earth feel that you know you've been speaking this for a long time he said but i am not in time no see that's what you're saying it's the day can be long he says i'm not in time so he says i and we with him have been speaking things and they have been coming to pass but Man sees a delay. So as soon as man sees a delay that doesn't know God or his ways, they start to say, oh, okay, that was a dud. You know, that didn't happen. And he says, no, that's not it. That's what Satan wants you to believe. And that's why so many say, you know, I'm not seeing it. You've been talking about it for what, three years now? I'm not seeing it and I'm tired of listening. You know, what did they say? And I've said this before. This is like the days of Noah. That's what it says in Matthew 24. So with that said, how many days did it take Noah to build that ark? How many years? You know, how long? Like a hundred years. So I'm not saying that this is going to take this long. But I do know that we are going someplace and the more we speak it and the more the wrath comes out of our mouth, the faster it's going to occur. And I know that. But he said, these here, they're speaking. The lamb is speaking with wrath and vengeance, telling them, you don't understand. 
Satan has basically led the entire world astray. The Lord has always had a remnant, but Satan has done a number on the people. Mm -hmm. And there's so much I could say, and I, I'll forget most of it and we'll have to say it again another time, but um, two things. Here, what I read is they say to the mountains and to the rocks, fall on us, hide us, because eventually they get that it's them. Okay. He said, they just don't know it's them. And when they find out, because finally they get a revelation that you've been speaking about me. And all this time I was standing in my pride and arrogance and I didn't repent. But now I'm seeing what's happening and you are speaking about me and I should have repented. Then they go and they say, hide me. And that's why the Lord said, no rock will go unturned. We will unturn, we will over, we will turn over every single rock to see what's underneath because there's no mountain that's going to hide you. There's no rock that's going to hide you. You will be found and you will be spoken to the pit because you haven't repented because you have listened to Satan over God and you called Satan God without even knowing it. There, this is what he said. He said, um, speak. Okay, I'm, I'm really saying a lot of things. If you think I'm crazy so far, you will really think I'm crazy in a little while. So I was saying- You ain't talking to me, you're talking to them. <laughs> So anyhow, um, I told you that I knew I was there before the foundation of the world. I knew mm -hmm. it. I knew, I knew that, and I'll just say, I know that I was involved in creation. I know that I was. And I know that I have created things. And I know you have too. The Lord has shown us that very clearly. But what he said is, tell them that, that you have come back for what Satan stole to face him, not only 6,000 years ago plus, but 2,000 years ago. So I'm hmm. saying right now, because Satan infiltrated the church. We've talked about this before. And that is why we have spoken judgment. Some people say, you know, I don't like the church so much anymore because there's so much judgment. We shouldn't be speaking judgment. The bottom line is, if you're not called to speak judgment, if you know that that is not your position and most people it's not, don't do it. But if you never call Satan out, this is a different day. We know it's a different day. We know that usually, we know just like that song that Yahushua stood there and waited and just stood there and waited. We know in Psalm 2 that the father and the son were looking and watching and they could see that the nations, you know, were gathering together and they were considering a vain thing. And, you know, and they laughed and they're thinking, oh, my goodness, really? But it reached a point where they were angry. They said, kiss the sun, worship him. This is where we are. We're here in that day. The lion is Yahushua. Yes, the tribe from the tribe of Judah. He is the lamb. But there are his his own have his nature and they are a lion and they are a lamb that's interesting yeah you no, i mean 
I, I've shared these visions with you before. This was several years ago. The prophet mm -hmm. with a staff was holding the mane of the lion. Yes. And they were walking okay. together. Yes. But the I prophet remember. and the and the lights, and it all had to do with these cottages okay. and the light posts. Mm-hmm. And they they got the buildings got smaller and smaller, and the lion and the prophet got bigger and bigger, and then the lion roared. The mm -hmm. last one was the lion roared, and the prophet. The prophet didn't roar, but the lion roared. <laughs> um, and actually, when the Lord was speaking to me, He reminded me of those visions. So what he was speaking to me about the lion of the tribe of Judah, I'm just, I'm just saying not all those visions because I didn't know about all of them. I just knew that you had one vision where you were, or two or three, I don't know, but you had a vision where you were walking with um, the lion the, because you told me the, the prophet and the lion were walking together. So that has probably more meaning than you know right now. But um. What was I trying to say? So, 2,000 years ago. So he said, tell them that you, that you were sent back. So I've been sent back for this day. I was born in this day. And I know that you have a similar story. Um, but I know that I was brought back to this day for a reason. We should all, if we're in Christ, we're, there's a reason why we're here for this day. What is it? Find out what it is. People that I'm speaking to, you know, that belong to him. We all have a role, We, an R-O-L-E. We all have a title. We all have a place in him. You can't be somebody else. You have to be who you are. And what I was saying before, when you started talking about the lion and the lamb, so I'm going back and forth. So I'm trying to hold these thoughts, but um, I just lost it. But anyhow. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> I know. That's why I need to write it down. So what I do know is he said, tell them that you came back for this day to speak wrath to Satan, to slaughter him for what he did. And what he did is he stole, he stole from God. He stole from God. He stole the church, the churches for the most part. He stole, he, he brought in Babylon he brought in mixture. He mm -hmm. brought false doctrine. You know, it's funny. I have, I looked at this earlier. Mark 7, 13, you made the word of God of no effect. And you were talking about judgment. They don't want to hear judgment. The church doesn't talk. It's, it's, the church is not a church. It's a circus. Ecclesia, I mean, you can look it up original word where it comes from and it applies fittingly applies to what you have now it's a stage show performance to keep the people's emotions in check i guess it's, it's a false everything is false it's all lies the world is based on a lie the churches are all full of lies People, a lie unchallenged becomes truth mm -hmm. and they accept it as truth. But I remember what dad said over three years ago. Now I have come to challenge what you believe, how you believe and who you believe. I've come to challenge that. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what he's doing in part mm -hmm. of the challenge. Um, because what I was trying to say before, I'm going to get back to it because I, I I don't like it when I have missing or, you know, untied pieces somewhere. Um, this is a day like no other, because normally you could say, 
you know, you might say to me, what about seven times 70? What about forgiveness? What about, isn't, how could this day be a day when he's saying vengeance? Because this is the day of vengeance and wrath. This is the end because he has been silent for a long, long time. And this is the day that he's in heaven, but he's also in us, in his people. And he is speaking from earth. He said, I have to speak from earth and I'm in you and I'm using your mouth. I'm using your mouth and I have made you a queen. I have made you a king. And I have, you don't have to wait always for me to say something. You don't always have to wait for me to say it because I've given you authority. I've put you in a throne, the throne, and I expect that you're going to bring me back. You know, he's not, he's not angry. Like I'm speaking. I'm <laughs> trying to be serious about it. I'm well, that's the passion. Yeah. I'm just trying to show that he said, you do it. He said that to you before you do it. And he means you do it. I will help you. I will show you the way, but you're a king. Oh, wow. Yep. I will not do for you what you can. You can do it because yep. I've given you what you need. So you speak it. When you write and you know that he's giving you a decree, don't even question. Just do it and give it because you are a king. And he's saying, I love it when my children grow up and mature and they do what I've called them to do and they don't need me to handhold them constantly. Hmm. Do you hear what I'm saying? So the, I'm, I'm seeing it too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because you're because he is a perfect teacher. He is a perfect father and he does all things well. And there is a day where he says you no longer need me to tutor you on everything. You are tutored. Consider yourself graduated, right? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> you know that you graduated. He showed me that I graduated too. At, you know, maybe it was something else. But the bottom line is when you've graduated, you need to take control. He made it very clear to me one time. I've given you the, the scepter. And he said, and this was something that kind of scared me. He said, you haven't noticed something. The enemy is working behind your back and you haven't noticed it. And he did some things and um, I repented. I said, I will not allow the enemy. And that's why I'm so intense about it. When I see something that's not right, I can't not speak about it anymore, you know? And the mm -hmm. Lord showed me, that's what I want you to do because I gave you my heart even as a baby and you have loved people and you have allowed them to be who they are with you because you love them as they are. But that has meant many times that they walk on you. And at one time, that was okay. But today is a day where you speak, that's not going to happen anymore. Because you are acting, not you, but you, whoever I'm speaking to, are acting, I wouldn't say it this way, but I'm going to be blunt, you're acting like Satan right now. You're acting like Satan's child. I'm calling you out on it. And that's what needs to be done. It's not that you could say, who are you? I'm who God said I am. Mm -hmm. I'm doing what God said I'm supposed to do. If he didn't tell you to do it, then don't. Because I have to answer to everything that I do. I am walking by faith. I know what he told me. And believe me, I also know the penalty do I don't know the exact penalty, but I know that there's a penalty 
for doing things that he never told you to do. But I know what he's told me. And I take that very seriously. And I know you do as well. I know I want him back here. And I know mm. you do. And yeah. I'm, I'm willing to do anything for that to happen. Whatever he tells me to do. So he said, you know, um, just, just one thing, you know, I... I lived in a house for many, many years where somebody came in and they ruled and they reigned and they were full of hate. And every time they walked in the door, it was like a dark cloud walked in with them. Mm -hmm. It was not a com comfortable environment at all, but this person ruled the household and I knew that I had secret places. I knew that there were places that just God and I, you know, Father and I, Yahushua and I, you know, the three of us would meet. Um, and I know where those places are. And I've had people prophesy and say, you have places that you pray in your house because I can see like a light in a certain area. And I know that that's a place where you go, you get on your knees, yet you pray. And there was this place I'd always sit and I would always sit and, my, and I happened to be on my knees and that's exactly right. And I prayed in that spot for years and this person saw it. And then there's another spot. It doesn't have to be that, but the fact of the matter is the Lord shows you that he sees, he knows where you are. That's why they, that's why people speak these things because it encourages you. You know, I am with you. When we have these meetings, you are there and it's not, it's, it's like you are invisible, but you are there and I know you're there. Mm -hmm. And so this is good. But when I was speaking about this person, I, every time they came into the house, it was a certain darkness and I hated it and I couldn't wait for that person to leave the house and so I said never again I will not have darkness in this house again and you know if someone hates you that's darkness I don't care if they're a family member or not if they somehow hate you for nothing if you've done nothing wrong but they found something that they hold against you because Satan has whispered in their ear, then I don't want that person in my house. I don't want hate in my house. If you hate me, don't come. I've learned that I have to speak that forth because, you know, someone said to me, can't you just, can't you just let it go? And I said, I can't let it go. The reason why I can't is because all my life I let it go. And what happened? The Lord opened my eyes and he showed me what Satan looks like and what Satan sounds like and what Satan acts like. And Satan is in the flesh. He attaches himself to the flesh. So when someone's being fleshly, they are speaking for Satan and they need to watch out because if you do that, more often than you speak for your father, if you are a Christian, that's a dangerous, dangerous place to be. I'm just telling you. So I had to say, I will not have so-and-so or so-and-so here anymore. This is my sanctuary. This is where God lives with me. This house is full of light. This house is full of his presence. This house belongs to him and this house belongs to him. And so with that said, I can't, I can't anymore because it's his house. I'm not going to invite somebody that doesn't love me and doesn't love him. I'm not going to do it. So he said, this is how I feel. He said, he is love. And he said, I love people. I love them unconditionally. But he said, I can't go against my nature. 
I can't go against my laws. I can't go against who I am. If I give you a free will and you decide that you want to live like the world, then I have to let you go. And to me, yesterday, I cried, like from the beginning of the day until the end of the day. And then I cried again today. Someone came to the door and they looked at me, you know, and they said, are you okay? <laughs> it's because I've been crying because I felt the father's heart. I felt mm. what he goes through when his own children, and I was speaking about this before, I'm bringing it back. When his own children, that he's anointed even to be, to preach the gospel, when they decide that they want to follow their lusts and they want to live like the devil, that hurts him. And if they don't repent, then he has to let them go. And this is the day there's a lot of people that haven't repented. And we're to a point where the time of repentance, and you know it as well, has closed. And is, you know, it might be closing. I know what he said to you is do it quickly. So what you do is you go to the people you love and you say. He said do it tonight. The people, yeah. <laughs> that was quick. Yes, very quick. So he said we have to go to the next step because we're not going to delay this. Mm -hmm. Because I could, he could say, do you want to go the fast route or you want to go the slow route? I said, I want to go the fast route. Because when you know him mm -hmm. and you know that people are not going to change, how many times have you been around someone that will not change? I don't know if you have, but I have. I know people who will not change for anyone, including God. Now, on that day, they will probably be wailing. They will be wailing for mercy. Mm -hmm. You know, I spoke to someone today and they said, I said, can I trust you? And they said, yeah, can I trust you? And I said, yeah, you can trust me because God is with me. God sees everything that I do. And I would never do anything to hurt him. I would never do anything underhanded to hurt him. I'm not going to do anything to lose your trust. I will be faithful and true in what I've said I'm going to do. And I saw a little snarl, like I hate you. Yeah, you do hate me, but you hate him and me. And that's mm -hmm. the sad part. Can I trust you? He said, yes. And I said, I don't think so in my own mind. You can't trust someone who has turned their back on God, even if they think they haven't. The Lord will show you when people have made a decision and nothing is going to change them. You can warn them. You can beg them. You can plead with them. But their choice is made until they understand that they can't hide under a rock anymore. They're not hidden. They've only been kidding themselves because mm -hmm. God sees everything. And God says, you're not coming into the kingdom if you do not live for me. If you don't live as my sheep. If you do not follow the lamb wherever he goes, if you don't love me enough to give up your life, if you don't love me enough to do what I command you to do, then you're not worthy of me. And that is a hard statement because the world, Satan has taught people they can live the way they want and call themselves a Christian. And, you know, We've talked about this. So many people have said everyone's going to be saved. Well, that's not true. 
because there is a day of wrath and there is a day of vengeance and vengeance and people will leave. And yes, a lot of those people do not believe in God at all. But what he has said is there are people who think that they're mine and they're not. Just like we know, Lord, Lord, didn't I prophesy in your name? That that proves. He said, I never knew you. He said, I will say, depart from me. The problem is we as individuals love people. We were brought up to love people with our hearts. And we find it very difficult to say, depart from me. How can I say, depart from me from a relative? And he said, you need to love me enough. Mm -hmm. You need to see the truth. I've taught you the truth. How many times do you need to beg and plead and speak? He said, do it tonight. And that was a while ago. So he said that carnal flesh will speak to the enemy. And like I said before, if we look at Revelation 22, I think it's um, Revelate, ooh. Hmm. Revelation 22, 15. <laughs> <laughs> it says, um, Okay, I love this again. I love this part. This is the Aramaic Bible. It does say, I'm going to go to verse 11. It says, and he who does evil will do evil again. And he who is foul again will be polluted. The righteous again will do righteousness. And the holy will again be holy. 12, behold, I come at once and my reward is with me. And I give to every person according to his work. We know that. 13, he says, is it Elop and Tav? Elop? Elop and Tav. Uh, Elop and Tav. Okay. So he says, that's who I am. But I've also said, he doesn't, he doesn't say the. He says, I am Alpha. And I started speaking this and I didn't finish it. Alpha is a spirit. There are spirits that he has, he has given us. You have the spirit of son. You have, I know, I have a spirit of truth. I know you do too. I know I have a spirit of love. I'm sure you do too. I just know what, I, what he has told me. I know I have a spirit of justice. I know that you do too. The father wants to place his spirits on people that he has taken as his own, that are his, that he can speak through. And he said that Alpha is a spirit. And he said Omega is a spirit. And he said the Trinity each have the spirit of Alpha and Omega. So that tells me that more than one person can have the spirit of love more than one, you know, there, we know Holy spirit is the spirit of truth. We know, um, Holy spirit is life. We know Yahushua is life. So that's the spirit of life, spirit of life, eternal life, eternal. Life. So I spoke that there's more than one lamb so this mm -hmm. is this is where when you read the book of Revelation, it doesn't spell these things out. But the Lord said, these are the things that will be spoken in the future and you're speaking them now and people will reject them because sometimes they can't see it. And this is why I get so angry with translations because it's confusing. You know, I look at one and just one word is missing and it messes up the whole picture. So how do I speak this truth that he is saying 
the church needs to know without someone rejecting it. I can't worry about that. Because we've been taught that they're doctrines of devils. So we tend to slide, shy away from anything that is a little different from what we heard before. But we know that there's a wife of the lamb in the book of Revelation in, in the kingdom. But we don't hear a lot about the lamb the wife of the lamb in other places. I told you she's in Revelation 12. We've also talked about the man child, the mature son that was born. I told you already in other broadcasts, right? That that man child is there, but we don't see it in other places other than we know in Romans 8, it speaks about the sons there, but we we know that a lot of translations would make you think that that man child that was born was Jesus Christ that was born 2,000 years ago plus. But I'm telling you, and I've told you on other broadcasts that that's not him. But it is him. He's in that son. I've told you, I've talked about it. So we will talk about it more and we will say these things. I've already said that um, on one broadcast, I talked about Jacob. I've talked about who Jacob is. I've also, I've talked about that um, Jacob is on the throne and people will know that Jacob is um, ruler. I've talked about that. And so I've also said that you are Jacob. Now people are really going to be upset by that, but there are sons of God. There's a firstborn of son of Yahushua. There's a firstborn of Yahushua. There's a firstborn of Yehovah. Yehovah and Yahushua are one. They are the, fa the father told me that I am in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is me. I'm Jesus Christ, he said. He said, Jesus Christ is in you. Jesus Christ is in me. He said, I'm in you. I was in Jesus Christ reconciling the world. I am you and you are me. Does that mean in this flesh that I am all of the almighty God? Not in this flesh, I'm not. Right now, I'm not. I'm not saying I'm not saying I am. I'm just saying what I am saying is, and I don't want to get my tongue twisted. <laughs> what I am saying is he is in me. Therefore, I am him. I can stand as him. We can stand as him. Jesus Christ, because he said so. He said so. So I'm standing in the name. That's all there is to it. I'll say more later, but I like this, that it says, I am Alpha, the Omega, the first and the last. And this says the origin and the fulfillment. And I love that. So I'm just going to go a little bit farther. So blessings to those who are doing this, doing, excuse me, this is a very small print, doing his commandments. So blessings to those who are doing his commandments. This shows that his commandments matter. His statutes matter. And it says their authority. So let me read that again. Blessings to those who are doing his commandments. Their authority shall be over the tree of life and they shall enter the city by the gates. So he's speaking authority and he's saying, you'll be able to eat from the tree of life freely to those who obey my commandments. 
So that's just one thing. But he said, and outside, so outside are the fornicators. It is what it is. I'm just saying. Fornicators, hear this. You're outside. You think that you can, can live in your sin and that it doesn't matter. It matters. I'm speaking it out right now. There's a lot of fornicators out there. He's not playing games. The word is fornicators. It's not just spiritual. It's natural. It's in the flesh. So don't try to spiritualize it when it is also a natural thing. It is. So he said, and I'm just saying, murderers. I'm speaking this forth so people are very clear. Murderers can murder in the natural and they can murder people in the heart. I'm speaking it out. I've had people murder my heart before. I've cried. I was in great sorrow. I went to my father and I was in great pain over this. He said, you died seven times because people have hurt your heart. Now you're at a place where you don't have to die anymore. So we've talked about seven, seven, seven. And he also said, you hold seven crowns. So I have some history with him. He has worked in me. He has worked in you. I'm speaking from what he has told me. It is what it is. I'm standing in faith. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care how they feel about it. I don't care if they hate it. I don't care if they hate me. You're not the first person that's ever hated me for nothing. I just spoke the truth. People hated Jesus Christ, Yahushua, for speaking the truth, especially the religious people. So I'm speaking what he told me, and I am, I am just walking in the footsteps of my Lord and Savior. That's exactly what he did. So murderers. Idol worshipers, this is huge. We've talked about this over and over. You're not coming into the kingdom. You know, golden calves. Sometimes people don't understand. I've never built a golden calf. I don't know what you're talking about. It's that you're worshiping something other than the true God. You have a false God that you have gladly accepted. Some of these doctrines have brought in golden calves. You know, the prosperity message is idol worship. I'm not saying you can't be prosperous and be a Christian, but it's full of greed. They, many of them, will take a widow's last penny and never really give back. They're just interested in building their own kingdom, not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not, it has no greed. The kingdom of God is one where people help each other. People love each other. People share. People take care of widows. People take care of orphans. They are loved and helped um, the defiled, the sorcerers, all, this is kind of a weird, this it says all seers, which does it. So let me go, I'll go down. And then it says all workers of lies. So I'm gonna read in a different translation. It says outer darkness are where the dogs are. And he, has called people dogs. They're filthy. They'll go back to their own vomit and they will eat it. You see your dog. I know. Can you see the dog? <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking of this dog. I'm like, uh. okay. 
Me wouldn't do that, would you? <laughs> but anyhow, so it's um they are dogs. <laughs> Those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, everyone who loves and practices falsehood. So these seers that that the Aramaic is they're actually talking about would be the demonic divination not a seer prophet of God. So I just want to make that clear. That's one thing that that's kind of um, interesting about this. It'll say thing, little things like that. But, and it does say that I, it says Yeshua, have sent my angel to testify these things among you before the assemblies. I am the living God the root and the offspring of David and his companion and the bright and morning star. And I actually love that because it speaks of the Trinity being one because he has said that he wants to be with his companion and his companion is the father as well. So I'm just saying he wants his companion. He's, and this says here, the root and the offspring of David and his companion and the bright morning star. So with that said, that speaks of the Trinity to me. And we're going we're, we're gonna to learn a lot about David, I feel, you know, in the very future because of the covenant of David that will not end. I was just listening to David earlier on the Berean audio. Yeah. Yeah. I love David. I love him. He made mistakes, but he loved the Lord. So I wrote this down. Let's see. Um, I wanted to, and I'm, I'm almost done, but Revelation 22, again, what I just read, in most translations, again, it says all liars. And at the beginning of the broadcast, I made it very clear. All, I looked it up, it means all. So this is important to the Lord. And why is it so important? Because the father of lies is Satan. So if you lie, you are doing what your father whispers in your ears. And unfortunately, people do it once and in the flesh they go, this works for me, okay? This person's believing, believing me. I'm getting what I want. So they do it again. And then it reaches a point where it's a consistent, constant thing. And they do it so easily that it's, to me, it... It's frightening when someone can get to a place and lie like that lie came faster than the truth came because they can come and they can twist something so fast so that they can get what they want. That's manipulation. Manipulation mm -hmm. is the flesh. Manipulation is exactly what will not make it into the kingdom. That is not the nature, the character of God. That's the nature and the character of enemy. So it said, the Lord said, there are those who call themselves good people, acceptable to God, but the good they live is not lived out in truth, in righteousness. And only the truth and righteousness that only comes through Christ. It is the good of the world without God. So a lot of people would say, you know, this is a good life. You know, I do this, I have fun, I go to work, I go out and I go here and I go there and I do what I want. This is the good life. And the Lord says, that's not good. A lot of times they say, I have a good, happy family, but the family hates each other. 
he said they fight and you know they they don't they do not get along and they and that shows that they really do not love each other that's what he said they call it a good family but he says i call it torture he said you have been so used to living in torture and agony that you think it's good you you know and this is the truth and i see exactly what he's talking about because the kingdom is love there is no selfishness at all in love none none no one is self-absorbed no one is self-righteous no one puts you in your place because you love each other if someone is acting in the flesh then you would say we're not going to have that here you're not welcome if you're going to act like that i'm sorry gotta go you know um he said it's easy to point out a true satan worshiper but it's the ones that appear good worldly good but do not know god and live by what the carnal satan defines as good and he fools multitudes they think i have a good family but when you really examine what that family lives like acts like what they do it's very worldly and the lord says that's not good that's what i call torture and agony that's not the kingdom it's not loving with pure love so it says and those in the church that live out of the thoughts and desires in the hearts the thoughts in the of satan and not god because their heart was never changed their heart was never purified and he said and they are unrepentant full of pride arrogance envy they're self-absorbed selfish self-righteous boastful haters of the truth liars greedy murderers of the people and the children of god because satan uses church members and church leaders to kill the young in god and that's a form of abortion in some ways abortion is the natural and so i am almost done let me see if i have one more thing i'll be right <clears throat> i'll be right back okay so i'm going to speak this um the enemies of god hide themselves from god but not from each other they are hateful liars they're prideful they have robbing natures god's creation comes forth and i'm speaking creation to come forth and show every liar every prideful every work of the flesh turn over every stone every rock they hide under and show their faces let us see their faces of shock and awe when they find out that it was them that the lord's been speaking of those that hate god those that hate love those that steal the titles of his son and daughter they have set themselves as kings but they are fake kings with false humility show yourself betrayers and cut them off all of them leaving them for dead alive but dead dead to the flesh because they are ash alive to experience it in the pit sevenfold so this says because 
their existence has brought torture to the Almighty God. All those that are marked by Satan kill all betrayers. I'm speaking this decree. Kill all betrayers. Rid all of Satan's children from the earth. Sent all hateful flesh. And he said, the more I rid Satan from the earth, the quicker this world, Satan will leave and our Lord returns. I command time to start moving counterclockwise. Let the night, and I know that you've spoken this sort of thing about the light getting brighter. Let the night disappear little by little, but noticeable enough to cause fear and chaos in the earth. Satan's children hate the light. So come light, come day of God, come son of God. Increase the day quickly. I speak that forth. So I think I'm done for today. Are you sure? I think I am. How about you? You have anything else to say? <laughs> no. Take it. And happy birthday! <laughs> <laughs> uh, just another day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't know if that was sun. We don't usually see the back of, you know, your area there. And it looks like daylight back there. No, I turn the light on back there. <laughs> yeah, I like it. So I, I live quite humbly and I'm quite happy with that. Looks good to me. Looks great. Looks great. Good. So we are going to, to leave. So if the Lord wants us to come on during the week, only for, you know, like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, we will. We'll do whatever he says. I'll come on alone. We'll come on together if you want to. I just want to speak. And sometimes I feel like waiting a week to speak what we need to speak is just a little too long for me. So we'll leave it at that. So we hope that you have a good week. Anyone that's still on and um, take care. And I hope you have a great rest of your birthday. Thank you. Bye.